good afternoon everyone uh, welcome back um, so i am nena gulati i work as a senior consultant with indian infrastructure and i will be moderating this session the next session we have is the malaysia perspective opportunities under upcoming smart cities in asia the i will just quickly introduce the speaker a uh, town planner dr El elias rameli is a director general at plan malaysia federal department of town and country planning malaysia ministry of housing and local government he has more than 30 years of experience in urban and regional planning with major involvement in land use planning housing development planning land development process property market analysis planning laws sustainable future city urban redevelopment program and local government programs he has graduated from university technology of malaysia with a bachelor's degree in town and regional planning master of science in land administration and management he earned his doctor of philosophy in urban regional and planning housing planning a very warm welcome to you sir uh we can see your screen and uh, you can start with your presentation now okay thank you thank you to uh, madam uh, uh, moderator uh, miss naina gulati as a senior consultant from india and a very good afternoon to uh, distinguished um, participants ladies and gentlemen i'm alex only from kanoli um, alive from putrajaya malaysia and it give me a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon um, on at the conference on society in asia and um, today uh, i will be presenting on the topic on malaysia perspective uh, opportunities under upcoming smart cities in asia so um so the table of content and um, generally it will discuss four aspect covering the aspect of um, the background of the um, smart cities um exercise process in malaysia and some um, important points in relation to the um the question that you posed to me that on uh, the progress and the recent development on smart city exercise the third one um, we also try to um explain some of our innovation best practices and, and implementation and um, will be end with the um the direction and also sort of some way forward um for the um agenda of smart city especially in the context of uh, cities and settlement in malaysia context so um as a, the background um my department a uh, plan malaysia or federal department of town county planning our role is to uh, as custody in urban and regional planning in malaysia context so we play a key player as a key player in the context of um uh, city planning in general and also in relation to the uh, initiative from agenda of smart city and um, it is our responsibility to um, assist our ministry uh, ministry of housing and local government um, in, in the perspective of uh, the overall um, exercise on urban planning and especially um, and also including the um, current initiative on smart city so um in the context of the overall uh, planning of the smart city agenda which is focused we focus on several several items number one on to formulate a smart city blueprint or action plan and also we try to form national smart city platform um, which is a very important component in the perspective of uh, other initiative a big initiative on um, malaysia urban observatory i think it's, it's quite similar with the um, india urban observatory and also it's our role to set smart city accreditation and um, last with the uh, we will try to conduct or implement some awareness uh, program initiative um, whatever program in relation to the smart city um, at the national level um, up to the um, state and also the um, local level so our role here is on the context of smart city is um, is a duty or responsibility responsibility given by the nation by the uh, our country to the our ministry and also our department to exercise to give promotion to give awareness on the implementation of overall 
um, program in relation to the smart city. The next. So what is a smart city? So generally there are many schools of thoughts and fundamentals. It depends on the who um, try to um, define the definition of smart city. Some um, carry towards the uh, nature-based uh, smart city. Some follow the technological base of smart city. But in our context, uh, we, um, we, not to say this, um, we focus on the um, application of technology in the perspective of the um, Malaysian smart city. And we have de developed the um, one set of definition for the smart city in the context of Malaysia. And through the um, uh, Malaysia smart city framework that um, um, formulate uh, in 2019 and um, the period of uh, this uh, framework from 2019 up to uh, 2025, that's our target. And um, this document, which was uh, launched in 2019, um, will be referred by everyone, by the every uh, agencies and ministries, including um, private sector, and um, not only at the national level, but also at the state and local level. So we define generally what is the smart city is, uh, cities that use ICT and um, technological advancement to address urban issues, including uh, how to improve uh, the quality of life, on how to promote economic growth, develop sustainable and safe environment, and also how to encourage efficiency in the context of urban management and, and practice, in, especially at the local level. So we think that, we believe that through the technology, uh, we can make it the the, the exercise, the operation of the city, the city management will be more efficient, will be more effective. And we hope that this true smart city initiative by our department, it will be a benefit, uh, give a benefit to the people uh, to make, make sure that to make sure that the people feel um, feel happy and the community, the city um, in, the, in the situation of livable. And uh, the ultimate aim is to achieve the uh, to make sure that our city in, in a situation of sustainable, that the the general um, definition and what the, what are the uh, the ultimate aims of the agenda of smart city in Malaysia context. Next slide. So now we give you some um, uh, um, overall picture um, in relation to the uh, challenges in the context of uh, cities in Malaysia. So. Um, um, I think it's quite similar with the ASEAN countries, um, ASEAN countries also. So the rapid urbanization that has taken place in the last decades has resulted in, in various urban issues. I think quite similar with other cities in, in Asia, in Asia, such as increase in solid waste and high electric, electric um, consumption, inefficient water management, high land revenue water, public health issues. Um, high car ownership, environmental issues, increase in crime rate, and, and there are, and so on. I think quite similar um, situation happened in the context of um, cities. So some key urban challenges in our context, uh, Malaysia, uh, for instance, number one is increase in solid waste from 1.17 kilogram per person per day currently, compared to world statistics on 0.74, quite high in terms of the uh, solid waste uh, in the context of our cities. In terms of the energy usage, for instance, so currently um, we are, no, uh, in 1997, if you can see the slide, uh, we, um, our figure shows that uh, we are in the 104, 5 to 3 gigawatts per hour eh, in 1997, to 146, 5, 5, 5 to 4 gigawatts hours um, uh, in 2017. So that is the uh, energy usage in the context of our, our, our cities. In terms of the water usage, it's also in, in, increased from time to time, say from 2.5% each year uh, in 2017 up to 6.6 .6 million in uh, 2018. So the water usage is quite, quite high in terms of the, uh, the compared to 2017, although only uh, based on one year data. And the most recent um, situation in the context of Malaysian cities, we are faced with the issue of um, disaster, especially on a flood, uh, at the flash flood or natural flood. So it's, uh, last two days, it's happened in uh, our capital city of Kuala Lumpur. So very sad 
to the um, urban dwellers of Kuala Lumpur. So with these uh, urban challenges, I, we really believe and think that Smart City is um, in addition to other initiatives by federal, by state and local authorities in Malaysia context, is, I think we, we, we part of the solution in urban planning on how to manage the cities. Next slide. So also very brief on the evolution of city development towards smart city. So um, in the context of urban planning, we uh, recognize that 1930 as um, the start of the thinking of um, to make it the efficiency uh, or plan um, cities in the context of uh, Malaysia. And the most significant um, year is in 1995, because at that time we have uh, set two new areas. One is Cyberjaya, kind of called as a Malaysia Multimedia Super Corridor, still active until today. And we also have the Putrajaya. Putrajaya, um, we developed Putrajaya, separated from Kuala Lumpur, around 30 kilometers uh, from Kuala Lumpur, and we developed um, Putrajaya as um, the capital, um, the Malaysia and the capital uh, city of uh, Malaysia. So in, in addition to Kuala Lumpur as a business center. So I think the, at that time, um, we think that uh, the administration uh, must be uh, separated from the business, business area to reduce the uh, issues, um, the problem in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. I think um, quite similar uh, action done by uh, other countries, for instance, in, in Australia, they have Sydney, they have Canberra. So Canberra focus on administrative and the uh, Sydney as a business center. So um, in addition to Cyberjaya and Putrajaya, um, we also have other, um, uh, so, so we recognize that these two Cyberjaya and Putrajaya as a catalyst. Though at that time we not call them as a smart city, some said as intelligent city, some said with the um, modern city, but it's give the, um, the uh, what I call it, example uh, for other cities to develop, uh, to include some, the components of the uh, smart element, some component of technology in the context of um, urban oppression or urban planning. And after that, we have um, a small um, area um, initiative. For instance, we have KL Central that focus on as a transportation hub with mixed use development. And we also a big, um, I think more than 25,000 acres in Iskandar, Malaysia, southern part of Peninsula, Malaysia. And, um, and others. So um, the formulation of Malaysian um, Smart City Framework in 2019 has taken a step in uh, the planning and development of smart cities in the country. So the, the year of 2019 is very um, significant in the context of uh, Malaysia, especially in perspective how we want uh, to encourage our city to incorporate some elements in relation to the smart city. Now we proceed to the uh, progress of uh, Malaysia smart city development and uh, in the context of city simulation. So I'll give you uh, several examples here. At national national level, as uh, I, I said before that um, in 2019, we have developed um, Malaysia smart city framework for to be applied um, from 2019 to 2025, six years. Huh? So this focus on national level, but it can be applied, can be referred at the state and also local level. So in the context of Malaysia, we have 155 uh, local authorities. We have 13 states, plus we have three federal territory areas. So these states, these federal territory areas and uh, 155 local authorities, they can, they can refer uh, when they try to develop their own blueprint or action plan for the agenda of smart city. So briefly, um, this uh, smart city framework is national level framework that serves as guidance and reference to uh, special local authority and uh, to the city manager, to the professional, to engineer, to the architect, to town planners, also to the state government and um, federal ministries and department, also in the industry players, academicians and other stakeholders in the planning and also in de developing the uh, smart cities in Malaysia context. So the framework was developed uh, by taking into uh, consideration the importance of smart city development and implementation in the context of Malaysia. So there are many terms, other terms, initiative in, in relation to the cities. So smart city is one of them. 
Although, let's say, sometimes smart city with the low carbon city, some of the components quite similar. So this um, framework will be the catalyst to smart city uh, implementation in Malaysia, especially to the local authority, especially to city managers, to the president of the city council. And um, it consists of, uh, in general, okay, um, 16 policies, 36 um, strategies, 112 uh, initiatives, and also 92 indicators. So, um, so there, are, uh, there are seven basic um, components here, major uh, component here. Starting from the smart government, so there are three initiatives here, you see the slide. So smart economy, uh, smart living, smart mobility, smart environment, smart digital infrastructure. So it, digital infrastructure is a game changer in the context of uh, development of the smart city, but also important is the smart people. So if you have good infrastructure, good mobility, good living environment, but if you don't have the uh, good people, smart people, so the, the whole idea of um, developing the concept of smart city in certain cities or certain settlement will be not fully achieved. So the smart people is very important in the context of smart city. Next slide. So the, the second initiative by the national level is uh, we have developed the um, Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint. So we call it a My Digital, Malaysia Digital. So this digital is national initiative, which, uh, which uh, describes that the aspiration of the government of Malaysia to ensure that we can transform Malaysia into a digitally driven, high income nation, and also a regional leader in the context of economy. So we have ambitious vision uh, in the perspective of smart city, not only in Malaysia, but we have to make sure that one day Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya, Cyberjail will be benchmarked to the other cities, not only in ASEAN, but also in Asia and also for the rest of the world. So um, this My Digital uh, comprises of six trusts that supports the objective and overall vision of the blueprint. So this includes a digital government. So under number, trust number one, so there are many trusts. So number one is to drive digital transformation in the public sector. So I'm working as a government servant. So it's quite important uh, agenda for, um, for us, um, play by the uh, my digital. So this trust uh, address that a digitally um, enabled government will provide integrated end-to-end -end online government services, which are more efficient, effective, and transparent. So that's why in the context of government service in Malaysia, we have our own target. Number one, 100% civil servant to process a digital literacy. Two, 80% end-to-end -end online government services in the context of government service in Malaysia. All ministries and agencies to provide cashless payment option, and we put 2022, okay? And 80% usage of cloud storage um, across the government agencies in 2022. Next slide. So number third is um, uh, we also form um, formulate national digital infrastructure, or we call it as a jendela. You see at the right of the table. So um, that's explained from the perspective of what tower target in term, in terms of the wireless broadband, in terms of fixed broadband, in terms of delivery of ecosystem. So uh, this jendela, okay, uh, is a document prepared by the, uh, we have a special, uh, the commission, we call it a Malaysian Com Communication and Multimedia Commission, and it was launched in uh, 2020, August. And this uh, jendela, or National Digital Infrastructure Plan, was formulated to provide wider coverage and better quality of broadband experience for the people of Malaysia, whilst preparing the we address on the, the uh, our country to prepare on the 5G technology. And this will support um, the local government in particular because the local, uh, the local government play important role in the context of the success factor in the context of Malaysia. So to the local government, uh, to the city managers in providing better digital services in line with the Malaysia Smart City Framework. So we have a Jandela, we have the Smart City Framework. So these two documents are very crucial. It's very important to be referred by the, especially by the local authorities. Next slide. 
And now we have to mean uh, mainstreaming uh, richest smart city planning. So because I'm from planning uh, background perspective, so um, we are very really lucky in the context of Malaysia. We have three levels, three tiers of the urban planning exercise, from uh, the level number one, uh, national planning and at the ministerial level. So we have um, socioeconomic plan that also uh, propose um, several initiative project in relation to the. Um, smart city. We also have um, a national physical plan. We ha also have the sectoral uh, plan. And the second level on regional and state planning, we have several um, documents in relation to the urban planning. And the third one, the most important, is the local planning. We have the local planning, we have the special area plan. And after the district tier for planning, the agenda of smart city will be uh, incorporated during the process of uh, planning permission by the local authority. So the agenda here, not only planning permission, the engineering plan, the building plan, and other plan must be suit with the what have been addressed in the framework and in the jindala. My digital. Next slide. So now we go to the smart cities innovation or practice and implementation. So where are we now? What's our innovation? What are our best practices? And also how the implementation so far? So now we go to the number one. So we have uh, currently in the pipeline to uh, prepare Malaysia Urban Observatory, MUO. So we have at the national level, um, I think this is in line with the uh, global urban uh, observatory and also regional urban observatory. Let's say for regional, probably we have the, the ASEAN level and we have four country level, uh, call it as a Malaysia Urban Observatory that um, the owner is um, normally is government servant, but uh, our um, idea is to share the data, the analytic, the analysis to the public, uh, the private sector. And we hope that one day, um, each of the local authorities in Malaysia, 155 also try to, to de develop their own local urban observatory. Next slide. So through this uh, urban observatory, we hope that will be an, an integrated infrastructure at the federal, state and local level and we will be focused on data sharing integration and also we can exercise some big data analytical approaches in the context up to the local level. So this is very important for us. Next slide. So, so national smart city platform, we call it an NSCP, is a sub model under Malaysian Urban Observatory. So our MEO has I think more than 10 a model. So one of them is a national smart city platform. So we apply the smart city ideas in the context of um, Malaysian Urban Observatory. So with the, this establishment of MUO in the, in the pipeline, so we hope that by 2025 we can finish the process. And the local level smart city implementation is um, currently uh, gearing up. So there is a need to establish a platform that is able to integrate smart technology enabling the rapid delivery of new data application and also creating a connected smart city ecosystem in the context of national, state, and local level. So very important agenda um, in terms of the um, MUO. So this MUO um, platform is, um, is very important in the context of national smart city platform through NSCP. And it will be a platform to facilitate and sharing the municipal data and also information that more to make it more efficient um, in, the, in this perspective is at the federal level. So this platform, hope, we hope that can assist in the analysis of strategic data related to the urban development and management to make sure the um, decision making process will be more um, fast and to be more um, efficient. Next slide. So <clears throat> number second is on the standard for smart city. We believe that the standards is important to achieve the agenda of sustainability. So we, can, we have applied the ISO standard to help us, not only smart city, but our overall ultimate aim to make sure that the SDGs objective and goals can be achieved. So regulator can rely on ISO standard as a solid base on which to create public policy that have for the SDG goal, right? such as human rights, water and energy efficiency, public health, and so on. Okay. So recognize the world over. The international standard also help government achieve their national and also international commitment. So that's commitment from Malaysia and also from Malaysia cities. 
for instance, through the uh, SDG number 11 that focuses on sustainable cities and communities. So the standard for smart city is created as a guide for government in implementing smart city. So why we need standard for smart city? We go to the next slide. So um, standard for smart city is a trend globally, but how do you benchmark it? Okay, through this standard, it will help cities to build a unified understanding, create opportunity for cooperation and also collaboration, and you will reduce the cost, or too much the cost, and uh, the standard will benefit um, the cities, the will, will, will benefit us in terms of the more effective governance and delivery of services, uh, will be um, easy to, to the international community to benchmark it, and easy to, we, for us to monitor the targets, and to leverage for funding and recognition at the international um, entities, and also comparable data for city decision making inside and global benchmarking. Next slide. So um, the Ministry of Housing and Local Government Malaysia, through um, our department, um, Plan Malaysia, together with um, a special department of standard Malaysia, the SM. So we have developed MS ISO 37122 indicator to smart citizen standard. And it will be standard to be used as guidance in evaluating and also to de develop, to evaluate, to monitor the implementation of smart city in the context of Malaysia. So in more details, there are 19 components in this uh, Malaysia standard and it's covered um, 80 indicators. So generally, um, it will be uh, served as the reference to the city. Uh, by uh, using of 19 component and 80 indicators. So um, in general, um, uh, among the important um, component in the uh, Malaysia uh, Smart City Standard uh, uh, in, on environment, on economy, on education, housing and communication. Next slide. So recognizing uh, the importance and the need for the implementation of smart city in our country. So the standard department in Malaysia has upgraded the existing administrative structure from the preparation of smart city standard, before it was just a normal smart city standard, to its own national steering committee. So this steering committee led by um, our department, by our director general, uh, myself. And it is in um, as an effort to encourage the preparation and enactment of, of more standard and technical codes for smart city in our country. And um, as I said that we, um, as, a, as a planning, urban planning agencies have been given a uh, big responsibility uh, to exercise the uh, monitoring and evaluating the standard of smart city in Malaysia. So we will play our duty to ensure the uh, standard can be applied uh, smoothly and can be referred uh, by the um, all parties. Next slide. So uh, in addition to the standard, we also uh, have the other initiative by each state. Very quickly, we have 13 states, we have th uh, three federal territories areas. So for instance, number one is Slango. For the state of Slango, they have created the Intelligent Operation Center, SSOC. Next slide. So uh, in the state of Penang, uh, in Penang, um, they have developed a Penang smart parking. So if you go to Penang uh, one day, uh, you have an opportunity to go to Penang. So very easy to find parking and to pay parking and, and also help you if you get salmon for parking it's very easy to pay for you to pay uh, the sum for parking next slide and um, other than Penang and Selangor other state also we have Sarawak we have Johor and also we have uh, uh, state of Perak they are they're also quite serious in um, formulating uh, the agenda of the smart city next slide now we go to the uh, the rule of local governments implementation at the local level so um, Malaysia has seen a uh, mushrooming of smart city project across the country in the past uh, five years, I think before 2019. And um, the fast growing of list of smart city project, some at a city scale, uh, some at a uh, certain uh, level of the um, state level, and so specific that encouraged on the system of the Nikotek um, of each city. So, so the type of smart city project that uh, Malaysia uh, generally has a multitude um, ecosystem that uh, played by everyone, by every stakeholders to make sure that we, uh, we uh, the agenda, the idea of smart city can be applied in context of almost more at the local level and also at the state level. 
So this helped highlight the smart city uh, to be seen as an urban development a governance solution framework that are, that, are, that are increasingly being implemented in the context of Malaysia. So I'll give you an example. So number one is um, Putrajaya Corporation that serve um, the area of Putrajaya. They have uh, their own initiative on Putrajaya Common Center. So, okay, uh, now we proceed to number one is Putrajaya, the capital city of uh, the capital and this is center for Malaysia. Second, more big scale in, in Skanda Regional Development Authority or IRODA. And they currently um, very serious in developing the Iskanda Malaysia Bus Rapid Transit or IMBRT. So budget is already approved and they are the, in the final uh, approval to get approval by the local authority. So um, they plan um, a big area uh, for southern part of the uh, peninsula Malaysia. So the BRT network and, it, and it's uh, accompanying by the routes, uh, certain bus routes, uh, ambition as a means to significantly enhance public transportation. And this will be involved the, the technology to ensure that the efficiency, the effectiveness in conducting or in developing in the operation of BRT. Next slide. And so in, uh, in Kuching um, local authority in Sarawak, um, so Kuching uh, local authority has developed a Kuching urban uh, transportation system that call your KUTS. So this, um, we hope that this, tr through this uh, KUTS, a reliable um, transport system is, um, can be applied in the context of this uh, city of Kuching that will build more greater um, productivity and economic growth, not only for cities, but for also for the whole state of the Sarawak. And uh, the Sarawak Metro, I think this is the, um, uh, is implementing the Kuching Urban uh, Transportation System, uh, aimed to minimize the um, issue of traffic congestion in the cities, which is, um, I think, quite um, uh, similar with other cities problem in, in the world, okay? Now we have small scale area, small scale project on the Kulim um, local authority in northern part of New Zealand Malaysia. Through this uh, Kulim integrated data special, we call KITS. Before this, KU KUTS, eh? now KITS, okay? So um, this is only an example, a small initiative by certain local authority. So this Kulim integrated data special is, special is a pilot project by the Kulim municipality. Uh, that focus on the spatial data uh, integration process to combine multiple spatial data types. Before this, they work um, uh, separate, separately, and now we they use the kit to ensure that this the more efficient data integration in the context of the um, local authorities for their storage, for their um, analysis, uh, for analysis and to get finding or results. So the system um, is um, support real time information with base map from their local planner. Eh? And now we proceed to the last chapter on the way forward. So what are the, 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 the feature of our digital exercise to, to ensure that the Malaysia to achieve the smart nation one day, okay? So there are many probably also many challenges and opportunity in becoming a smart country. So we address this through this, um, we have no choice. We now at the digitalization age. So we have developed city framework. We have, uh, have my digital uh, and we have also the jendela. So we have seven components that I um, presented before on the, um, the component of smart city. And to move forward to, towards a smart city national status, there are few significant roles that can be played and that to be focused by every parties that involved with the um, developing or in the planning of smart city agenda. Next slide. So number one, we address here in the uh, number one, we try to accelerate digital transformation or DX in the perspective of local government in Malaysia. So this um, uh, um, figure shows that the um, achievement in the context of the uh, data transformation among our um, states in uh, Malaysia. So generally in the perspective of Malaysia, comparing 2018, 2020, um, following the statistic on media data, so we still currently at the stage of 45.1% 45 
from the total service of application in the context of government services in Malaysia. So, um, although we have an ambitious uh, vision, so um, it's not easy to achieve. But what we try uh, our best uh, in the context of urban planning, in the context of urban operation, in the context of other um, duty of uh, ministries and agencies. So, um, the idea here is um, to transform the, the action that is in need. Uh, number one is to leverage digital technologies and util utilize digital tools in the context of local government main services. That's our target. And to enhance the digital skills sets of city administrators through the right capacity building. So this is a DX. Next. So um, our way forward also on, on will be give uh, special attention, uh, attention on the end-to-end uh, -end digital services that based on people centric. That's why in our smart city framework, we have put smart people is one of the important uh, component. So this is the proof of smart city in the initial context. So we believe that um, smart city is a significant approach in managing cities. Okay, with people centric concept, the people will decide on what kind of services and facilities is needed for them. So local government uh, should play no choice to play their role to make sure that we can provide integrated end to end online services to ensure transparent and efficiency of the public services delivery that is not only improving quality of life but also will improve the revenue of the local authority of local government in the in the long term okay number third so establishment of establishment state and local urban observatory so other than uh, meo um, that in line with the, the national level uh, urban observatory so we also uh, hoping that the state and local level also address and focus to develop one day on their own state or regional urban observatory and also at the local level we call it a local authority uh, urban observatory and now um, it's good because there are uh, local authorities in Malaysia has um, as uh, question us and uh, meet us on to help them to develop the uh, urban observatory at the state and, and, and the adult level so next slide Number four, um, our way forward is to strengthen open data policy and extensive data sharing. So it's not an easy job. We, I think other states, other cities also face a similar situation. It's not easy to um, share the data. So, but very fortunate in the context of urban planning in Malaysia. So we hope one day uh, local government need to establish a comprehensive data sharing policy at the uh, local level and we work towards this now and we have start in my department we have a um, special initiative several initiatives to ensure that the element of data sharing open data in the, in the context of uh, urban data can be uh, referred by everyone including um, from the um, outside of Malaysia so for instance I give you only two examples that already started for, oh, number one we have um, a system called integrated land use planning information system we call i think you can um, just um, add it in google you can get the existing data land use the committed development and also for future development for the whole peninsula of malaysia so and it is easy and um, we call it x application you can download it through the uh, google play and so on and we also a 20 years program on um, sustainability data for our cities called as a nation urban rural national indicator for such development so this through this system through this network it will help um, investor um, developer uh, city managers government agencies to find what are their um, um, advantage what are their loophole in in, in relation to their development um, or issues in the context of each city. Next slide. We also propose um, a city as innovation hub or living tech and testbed. So myself as a chairman for national um, um, smart city committee for um, smart city standard, we uh, believe that the concept of living life is which is popular in uh, developing smart cities, and we hope it brings producer thinkers, innovators, and consumers under one umbrella. 
So although the concept may vary depending on the perspective, focus, and ideological implemented, the purpose of development is the same, which is to exchange and exchange knowledge. It's, it's nothing wrong to start the, the agenda of smart city from small to big. So we can learn each other. Sometimes the big um, entities also, they can learn something from the small items, small initiative. So this will provide an opportunity for an innovator up to the startup, technology provider, businessman to enhance, to explore smart city with the pilot project, such as um, testing uh, of solution in the actual environment. Okay. So I wish that more local government in the context of Malaysia to be uh, to work more closely to encourage the formulation of the city as innovation hub. So to help all stakeholders in developing uh, their cities to make it more efficient and to apply the concept of smart city. Next slide. And number six, improving participatory, uh, participatory planning through digital platform. So nowadays, um, attention to public participation and interaction in decision making is central to the debate about smart city. So technological process has enabled the creation and rapid evolution of a new form of urban planning that referred as e-planning that incorporates the traditional element of urban planning into information communication technology, ICT, which is central to the um, exercise of the local government. So through this, um, participation um, exercise, the city administrator need to design and set up a collaborative digital platform involving public and local government to foster um, active participation, improve accountability and also transpar transparency in the um, administration of the each city. Okay, I think the, the last one in on the um, how to facilitate digital infrastructure deployment. So, um, so we believe that the aspect of the digital infrastructure is vital and pretty The game changer in conducting, in implementing smart city is digital infrastructure. So this is pretty to the um, implementation of smart city implementation. So national digital infrastructure, or we call it Jendela, have set the, the three um, aspiration of our telecommunication aspiration. Number one is 100% coverage of 4G in Malaysia. Speed must be 100 MBS per second, third one gigabyte access to cover 9 million of premises in the context of um, other cities or um, settlement in Malaysia. And the local government could assist the digital infrastructure deployment. This role played by the local government to deploy uh, this exercise through facilitating the process to achieve the best connectivity level and harness the smart city implementation. So rule of um, local, local authority is very crucial and it's very important to make it the efficiency, uh, the, to make it the, um, to speed up the approval process for digital infrastructure. And um, the last slide here is on the challenges. So sincerely, I, we have to address here transparently. So there are, although there are many framework, uh, that um, formulated by the many parties in Malaysia, we still have um, faced with the challenges to the implementation of smart um, city. So, so as we move closer to being a smart nation one day, so the demand for smart technology development and IT problem solving is very crucial. So although the number of developers and innovators tackling smart city innovation is, is increasing from time to time, but there is still remains a series of issues and challenges that faced by the uh, many parties, many parties, okay? So um, some of the challenges, well, we can turn challenges to the opportunity. So number one is the city players working, still uh, some of the players still working in silo. So we need to address this matter. We have highlighted at the, at the, at the um, municipal level to ensure that the, we can um, ensure that the, the address, the outcome of smart city to be shared together by the municipal level and agency level. And we're still um, trying, although we have the uh, special committee, uh, standing committee for um, the standard, but still we're still in the process of um, to uh, form one uh, national council in the implementation of smart city. And number third is on the high cost. We everyone believe that smart city will involve high cost. So um, number four is on technology and, our, and IoT. 
So Internet of Things, IoT, cloud computing, big data, and artificial intelligence AI give impact on policy to be adapted at the smart city planning and development. And uh, number number last here is level of readiness for 4G or even 5G varies from every city in Malaysia, though we have set target. So the gap in the level of readiness and acceptance of the community towards the development of technology um, briefly um, hinders the development or the implementation of a smart city. So um, that's all, um, Ms. Naina. So as conclusion, uh, the main goal of smart city is to optimize city function and promote economic growth while also improving the quality of life for our citizens by using smart technology and data analysis in addition to the natural base of the um, uh, exercise or initiative. So um, we have set um, 2025 uh, in our period of smart city uh, framework, but we think that uh, still uh, have to go through uh, many process um, to become uh, one day a smart people, a centric country that for address on the agenda of smart city. So um, in our um, current perspective also, our um, initiative, uh, we try to achieve um, a special um, vision uh, to ensure that uh, livable Malaysia. So we have um, underlined the smart city agenda, smart city initiatives as part of the how to make sure one day um, we can achieve the uh, livable leaky um, aim for Malaysians and for our country. So that's all, uh, Nana, for this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you for the everyone attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for such an informative presentation. Uh, I just have one question for you. Uh, you mentioned about the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint, right? Uh, if you could just elaborate on any of the challenges that you're facing in the implementation of the same. So your question is on the challenges in implementing digital economy. Yes. Yeah. We can be um, say sincerely that we still face the challenges. Many challenges happen. And uh, one of them is still related to the urban planning exercise. Then our duty is to optimize digital infrastructure to achieve the my digital of Jindela. That's why we have said, uh, said before, is our target is to ensure that 100% of internet coverage, generally for Malaysia, that focus on certain area, settlement area, 100 Mbps in 2035 uh, for the internet speed. So we also um, target that for our premises everywhere, up to 9 million premises to connect to fixed line by using the gigabit access. So very serious um, and not to say ambitious, and this is in the pipeline and the government uh, up to the level of prime minister has um, addressed this matter, uh, not in the context of our five years leadership plan to ensure that because we have um, understand that Digital infrastructure is a crucial, is a game changer to the success of the implementation of smart city uh, concept emission. That's why we address this seriously in the context of uh, implementation in the context of Malaysia. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, that brings us to the end of this session. Thank